Hey, there's our seam right there. We may get lucky and not even have to make but one cut. Oh, grape ape, not grape ape, grade eight. Uh, so some strong bolts. Very few watching, no. Oh, we're having a five alarm fire here, I think. All right, welcome back party people. So today on the death and destruction channel, we're gonna tear the floor out of this van. Yes, that's right. We need to do some exploratory surgery because I am going to try to find out if I can install this seat in the cargo area of the van. And so what I'm gonna try to do is install the seat somewhere in here facing forward. So I've really got to open this area up. So that means I'm gonna have to take this cabinet, sink cabinet out because I don't want to take all this other stuff out because quite frankly, I'm a little bit lazy because I don't know if it's even gonna work. So I'd rather cut the floor and try to rip it up and uh, put new flooring back down or put the same flooring back down if I can save it versus taking all of the battery boxes out, the fridge out and all of the other stuff out because that is just more of a nightmare and if i take all of that stuff out and find out i still don't have the proper spacing here for the seat brackets then that's going to be a job for not so that means removing our sink cabinet got to remove our floor edging and then we've got to take our skill saw and make at least a half inch deep cut across here and up and that'll get us through the plywood, um, I think I can take the vinyl flooring up because it was only done with edge tape. So I think I can actually take the vinyl floor and just fold it back and preserve that. And then make a cut here and get our section of plywood and then come back with a razor and cut through the poly ISO. And then once we reveal the, uh, the peaks and the valleys that are indented into the cargo floor here then we're going to have to get up under the van to see where we can actually put these brackets because there are frame rails and cross members and gas tanks and other things up under here so we got to figure out how to get around all of that it, even if it's even possible because normally the single seat on a passenger van is up against the wall over there and so i know the spacing back here is okay but in the center not so sure so let's get to it so we just pulled the sink out and just kind of set it outside and uh, now we're going to pull this step off here this will give us access to the edge of the plywood so we're going to pull these little covers up this should come up now so we got our step up so that's as close as we're going to get to the cutting to the box with our skill saw so we'll just cut along the line of that box there so I only put the, uh, the tape on the edges so the edges are going to be the place where we may or may not be able to save this vinyl got some edging here that off. I don't try not to stretch it too bad. Hey, there's our seam right there. We may get lucky and not even have to make but one cut over there against the wall. Aha! That's good. So right now I'm just setting the depth of my saw. See how this uh, controls the depth here. Don't worry, I don't have a battery in here so there's no power. So I wanted to get it, that blade, to the bottom of the plywood, so it'll cut through the plywood, and maybe just to the top of the poly ISO there. So that's about good. So that way we know we're only cutting through the plywood, right? And that's going to give us the depth of our cut that we need to make over there going forward.
far as I can go. Alright, we got some line started, so we should be able to get You can see now these are the the valleys all right so this is the other bracket for the seat um, i cut the other one already so we're gonna make a cut here and a cut here and that'll give us a bracket this length all right so i have a cutting wheel but i'm gonna use the handy dandy sawzall with a metal blade on it with a thin metal cutting blade on it let's see if we can get this going here real quick That's one side. Now we're going to reposition. Number two. All right, we'll sand these down later and we'll paint them up, but for right now we're just kind of doing some test kit. And so now we have matching brackets. What we have to do is figure out where can they go. So what we want to do now is actually probably bring the seat in here so it has an integrated seat belt already so we need to make sure we've got this thing bolted down to the van chassis very solidly and we're going to do that with some grade 8 bolts grade 8 washers grade 8 nuts or grade 8 everything grape ape not grape ape grade 8 uh, so some strong bolts worried about the leg room I'm just worried about can we get these things lined up such that the seat will actually sit in the van I'm just gonna lock so these things work by just locking in the front there and then let's see, pull up this on the back and it should sit in there like that leverage there we go that's what it looks like when you got seat on. Oh, skinny, skinny. Skinny seat, yeah. So, good. We look good right here. Nope. Let's see, it doesn't fit there. See how it's on one. It's not in a valley. Mm -hmm. It's in a valley on one, but it's not in a valley on the other. So, the only place it would really fit. I don't even know if it would fit right here. It might fit right here. either so my option here is going to be mm -hmm. very few options no. no, we're having a five alarm fire here I think and in the BIM they have some measurements but also in the passenger I think it's in the passenger it's one of the passenger documents that are up on Ford DeBoss as well. It shows you how much space you should have between the front seat and the passenger row. I don't think this is quite enough. I'll, I'll give it a check. Yeah, it's, it's pretty tight. I'm trying to determine if we can actually use the seat where it's actually sitting at with these brackets. Underneath the van, there's drive shaft, there's exhaust, exhaust shield, and then gas tank on the other side. So. Will these bolt holes align to something that's usable under the van? I have no idea. So we're gonna have to try to simulate it and then get up under the van and measure out from some of these uh, known mark points. Like we have a hole here that we can stick something up through and we can measure from there to the center brackets. And there's a couple other holes in here somewhere, but either way, um, we're just going to make some very crude tape marks right now to mark the front and the back of the chair brackets. And then we will make another tape mark and set the chair back down on it and then mark out where the bolt holes would be. All right, I'm just going to mark the back here crudely for now. So that's the back. 
All right, and what I'll do is I'll put another piece of tape under here and then we'll sit the chair back down and we'll mark where the bolt holes go. I'll use my head, pull the chair up. All right, party people, so welcome back. We're on day, I don't even know how many days I've been working on this, but anyhow, just don't have all the parts in at the same time. So you're running here, ordering there, doing whatever. I've been waiting for some specific screws or bolts, some grade eight bolts and or class eight bolts and uh, of the right size in order to tackle this job. And I went and picked up some steel at uh, my local hardware store and I'm going to use this as brackets. So I've already cut a couple of pieces as you can see here and uh, I've just deburred those and what we're going to do so I've already got one positioned in here just for some added strength and because these bolt holes are big and square which it kind of comes with these things anyhow and so all I'm doing is fabricating two together basically. So I'm going to put two holes in this and use it down in here. And then also, because of the way I'm going to have to mount one side, I'm actually going to drill another hole here. I think I can drill through this. All right. So when I picked up these seats uh, and the brackets, only, I only got one of these and I didn't get any for the rear holes. So I need to fabricate another one like this for the other side. And uh, this, this slides in like this and goes over the hole there. So you have a little bit of adjustability uh, from side to side there. So I want to duplicate this and I'm currently cutting from some raw metal stock here that I picked up and uh, I'm doing all the cuts with Sawzall and I don't have a drill press so I'm just using a regular drill here so I just finished uh, let's see if I can get this thing to focus so I just finished filing down this side and drilling the hole and when I get through you won't be able to tell the difference between these two all right let's file her down a little bit So I fabricated this other bracket because I drilled two new holes in here. You can see those under there and I just drilled them with my step drill bit. There's one there. So I'm going to match the holes here. So I want to give them a mark make sure this is centered up. And there's the two holes we need to drill. second bracket and I'll show you where that goes all right our second bracket actually goes over the two holes that I've already drilled here I may slot those I'm not sure yet but uh, these fit perfectly over those two and uh, that'll help kind of distribute some of the load on the top we've already got the ones made for the back we've got the ones made for the front they're over here so we have our two backs and then we have our two fronts just need to file down these ends now on both of the brackets, deburr those, and uh, we'll start to mock up the seat in the van, but unfortunately it's raining, so. All right, let's clean up the ends on our brackets here, and then it's not a good day to paint at all. Clean these up. I'm gonna rough them up, give them a sand, throw a quick coat of primer on them, and then we'll throw a coat of black paint on them. Right, I 
I filed the ends of these brackets down, but I'm going to just give them a good roughing up. This bracket's a little bit different. I actually drilled separate holes in it because of the way I have to adhere it to the van on that side. I needed a little bit more load distribution. If you're using a lot of paint cans, you can pick up one of these handles at your local uh, hardware store. This one is by Rust-Oleum. They make spray painting a lot easier. Plus it keeps the paint off your fingers. And uh, it is, uh, if you've ever sprayed a lot of spray cans in a short period of time, you know that uh, it does stress your finger and you start to make mistakes and the paint starts to drip. So this gives you a good leverage point with the trigger here. All right, I just uh, hit the ends of the brackets with some black enamel and uh, also where those two screw holes there on this side. Once we get that dry, get another coat on and we'll flip it over and do the other side and the ends. All right, round number two. Round number two on the brackets. All right, side one's dry. I'm gonna shoot the second side here. Make sure I get the edges. Almost there. About ready to put this bad baby in. All right, this video is getting super long, so we're going to call this one a wrap for now, and we'll pick it back up next week. You guys know what to do. Till next time, skill up and ride, van up and go.